Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our monthly recap on things that went viral on internet regarding the past. History and archaeology have had a huge month. From alleged ancient aliens to women discovering that men think about the Roman Empire regularly. At least some men. So let's dive into these two controversial topics. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jura and I'm an archaeologist. Ancient alien lovers were ecstatic when mummies of two alleged alien bodies were presented by a journalist, Jose Jaime Mausen, to the Mexican Congress. If you would have told me just a year ago that in a span of two months we would have congressional hearings in more than one country where we would be discussing aliens and that basically no one would care, I would have been shocked. But the thing is that people are like, yeah, aliens, okay, right. It seems like more people were shocked by the relationship between the men and the Roman Empire. We sure are living in a weird times. But let's cover the topic of alleged aliens first. And it is a complete mess. Two tiny bodies of alleged aliens with three fingers and elongated heads were, as stated by Mr. Mawson, found in fossilized state in 2017 in diatom mines, which is a type of algae. They were found in Peru conveniently near the city of Nazca, famous for the Nazca line. He also stated that they are not part of our terrestrial evolution. He also claimed that they were carbon-14 dated and that they are almost 1000 years old. This would make them ancient aliens, so that's why I'm talking about it at all. But this is where the plot thickens. The Institute of Physics of the National Autonomous University of Mexico, which has analyzed the samples, they said that they determined the age of the sample brought by each user and they don't draw conclusions about the origin of these samples. So they're excluding themselves from this controversy. Later on, X-ray and CT scans were performed on these bodies and Jose de Jesus Salce Benitez, director of the Center Scientific Institute for Health of the Mexican Navy said that the alleged bodies belonged to a single skeleton and were not assembled with animal or human bones. But Julieta Fierro, a researcher at the Institute of Astronomy at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, said that her university is not endorsing this story and these tests are not enough to determine the provenience of these bodies. Now Peru enters the chat, Peruvian Attorney General's Office and Institute of Legal Medicine and Forensic Sciences had launched an investigation when the bodies were found, so in 2017, and the consensus was that the bodies were recently manufactured. They were made from animal and human bones joined together with synthetic glue. They were covered with a mixture of plant fibers and synthetic glue to simulate a type of skin. The Peruvian government is now wondering how these specimens were even taken from the country and moved to Mexico. Now the general public and the scientists are also looking at this situation with skepticism. NASA and the whole international scientific community are calling for the availability of the samples so that they could test them. And the whole thing is even better when you realize that the journalist who presented the bodies is a known charlatan with a history of false alien claims. Even some UFO investigators think that the bodies are a hoax. The story just seems too good to be true. To me, it seems like a beginning of the story in which these alleged aliens were supposed to be presented as the authors of the Nazca lines. This is just my opinion, I don't know what the real intention was. So this was a false alarm for all the ancient alien fans. It still looks like all of the amazing buildings and structures and architecture were made by humans. Sorry to disappoint the guy with hair. Now, after this recap, let's move on to another shocking story that was trending on social media. The Roman Empire. 
around the same time as the aliens, the whole internet exploded after one tweet saying that women have no idea how often men think about the Roman Empire. So then women started asking their husbands, boyfriends, friends, how often did they think about the Roman Empire and it became a trend. Celebrities, brands, influencers all hopped on this trend, but my favorite crossover was Formula One and the Roman Empire. And of course, George Russell is the one to think about this the most. God bless his soul. Now, some experts like Mary Beard, the famous classicist, think that the ancient Rome is a kind of a safe space for macho fantasies. And I agree with her, anything that brings people to be interested in the ancient world is fine by me. But regardless, I asked the men on TikTok how often did they think about the Roman Empire and what about it exactly. And I got almost 300 comments. Now let's see the results and answer to some of the questions. Surprisingly, there were a lot of comments saying that they indeed think about the Roman Empire a lot. Some men were surprised by the question and others think about different historical periods. But when it comes to Rome, most men said that they think about the military, wars, emperors, mostly Hadrian, Marcus Aurelius or Augustus. Caesar, not from the imperial period, but I will allow it. Also about general and architect Agrippa, would Nero really burn down Rome? And they also think about other historical figures. Roman everyday life, cuisine, architecture, politics, art, mythology, water supply system, very specific. Also about Roman law, gladiators, slaves, position of women, and of course, orgies and sex life. On to the questions. I'll answer to some of the questions men ask in the comments. So, first one. Which Roman archaeological site is the furthest from the city of Rome? And that is Farasan Island. It is a group of small coral islands in the Red Sea and today they belong to Saudi Arabia. They are 4,000 kilometers away from Rome and two inscriptions were found that proved the presence of Roman military here in 144 AD, during the reign of the Emperor Antonius Pius. But they may have been here even before that. We do not have other archaeological remains, but we can at least suspect that there was a military camp. And why did they go so far from Rome? Probably mainly to protect trading ships entering or leaving the Red Sea from piracy off the coast of the Arabic Peninsula. Romans loved exotic goods that came from India and the Indian Ocean, namely pearls. They were a true sign of wealth and they were so expensive. So, they had to protect the precious cargo. Second question, how did they make concrete? Roman concrete is so fascinating. It was made from volcanic tuff and bound by a mortar based on lime and pozzolana, which is volcanic ash. New studies suggest that the Romans started making the concrete by heating up the limestone to get weak lime, which is highly reactive and dangerous. Then they used hot mixing techniques where they added pozzolana, sand, crushed ceramics and water to the quick lime to make hydraulic mortar. With this technique they got lime clasts that have self-healing properties, so when a crack occurs, water can penetrate and travel through the lime clasts, which can then react with water, creating a calcium-rich solution that can recrystallize as calcium carbonate and quickly fill the crack, or to react with pozzolanic materials to further strengthen the material. In this way, the crack is healed before it could spread further. And that is why we still have Colosseum, Parthenon Roman villas, aqueducts, temples, fountains, and so on. And the final question, what were tunics made from and where did they get cotton from? The tunics were mostly made from linen, a plant fiber from flax and hemp. 
After the harvest, the outer layer of plant stems was removed and internal fibers were stripped, pounded and then smoothed. After that, the materials were woven on vertical looms to produce textile. Then it could have been dyed, but that was only for the people who could afford it. The cotton was imported from India, so it was expensive. Still, it was cheaper than silk. We don't know a lot about cotton in ancient Rome, just that cotton fabrics were found in Rome, Pompeii and Pisa. We do know that it was produced also in Egypt even before the 2nd century AD and it seems like cotton clothes weren't a luxury there. Hope you like this mix of a monthly recap and Q&A. And you know what to do, like, subscribe, share, send to all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.